Hello and welcome to Health and Beauty Hacks. I'm Mia Sines. And for those of you who don't know me, I'd like to share a little bit before I bring you into the guest that I'm really excited to share with you today, which is John Gray. I am a self-love teacher and I also teach love and spiritual love. And in my journey of uh, healing the emotion, which is also what John talks about in his book, which is so fabulous, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. I just was diagnosed just recently, um, April 27th, 2020, of having multiple tumors in my right breast. The reason I'm doing this show is because it's so important for us to bring forward information on these type of hacks or ways in to help heal the body. And this is one reason why I'm really excited about John being here. But before I bring him on, I'd like to share that I was scheduled for a mastectomy and the whole uh, Western way of doing chemo and, and cancer treatment. And I realized that it was not congruent with who I was. And so I decided to look into the holistic side. And I have purchased things off of John's site in which we'll talk about, and that's why I wanted him on to share. The amazing news is that I have in less than two months, and this is a huge protocol all around with many different support ways of removing cancer from the body, but I could tell that my tumors were shrinking. And so I asked for proof, an ultrasound for the doctors, it was given. And in August, the last Monday of August, we got the results that the tumors have shrunk more than 50%. The doctor actually called into the room to say that, that there was, was a significant reduction in the size of the tumors. So that's very important. And I'm really excited to introduce you to John Gray. Welcome, John. It's lovely to have you here. Alice, oh, thank you. It's a real pleasure to be with you. I also wanted to let the audience know because there's a multiple variety of people who will be watching and everyone knows who John Gray is, but I really want to put out that his book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, has sold more than 15 million copies. And it's really been a big um, catapult for our culture today from this book. It's worked into TV series, um, the way people communicate. So welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. Uh, thank you. It's a real pleasure, and particularly because we're going to talk about health hacks, because that's one part of me that I'm not super famous for, but I'm totally into it. And as you mentioned at my website, I have like a health food store, but it's not just perusing the aisles. It's the ones I think are the best because I've tested them and, and I think they're good. But also I give little videos and what they're good for, you know, from yes. somebody who spent the last 20 years, I've had a health center uh, researching what helps for the little problems like uh, blood sugar balance, better sleep, better liver function, better digestion, uh, better hormone balance, uh, focus, optimism, uh, feeling good rather than depressed, taking away anxiety, better libido. All, you know, these, these are things that throughout history, there have been natural solutions for and people didn't need drugs. But then there's big things, and I'm certainly not an expert on the big things, uh, but one of those big things is cancer. And, uh, and when you handle the little stuff, then suddenly you can find natural remedies for the big stuff as well, although that's not my expertise. The little stuff will always help doing the big stuff as well. And one of the things you mentioned to me, and I'm very excited for people to hear about, is the Bravo yogurt which has got 43 different strains of probiotics. It's live and fresh because you make it at home. It's not in a store where it's had to be pasteurized or whatever. You know, we know yogurt is like an amazing thing for the gut to replenish the gut. What we're now learning is that the gut helps promote brain function. It's like so important and all the immune system is based on that. And you know, with everybody so afraid of viruses right now, if they could just get, you know, get your immune system in order. And there's many things that will do that. And uh, probiotics is one of the key things. And so you look for the best probiotic, which has got diversity, not just how many of three different probiotics you take in a capsule, but actually make the yogurt. It takes a little time to learn how to do, but it's easy once you learn how to do it. And you get it fresh and it's filled with 40 different strains of probiotics that combine and have a huge beneficial effect on the body, mind, and spirit. So 
with that, we learned a little bit about Bravo, but I'll let you ask questions and talk now. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. It's perfect. I've, I've watched many of your videos on your uh, wellness shop site. You know, you go into everyone. If you haven't, please check it out because there's a lot of amazing things. Can you share with us the difference between the milk probiotic and then the non-dairy? Because I am so fascinated. And, and I, as you know, I do purchase them, but I'm now going to also purchase the uh, non-dairy. So I'd like to hear about that too. Well, the, the, a lot, we, we, Marco Ruggiero invented this. Okay, he's a Swiss scientist. And we had just the basic dairy product. And many people felt they couldn't handle dairy. And so he worked very hard for many years to find the non-dairy version. He has shared with me, however, when the, when the problem is big, go with the dairy, okay? Because okay. those actual probiotics help your body to digest dairy better. Mm -hmm. uh, there's research showing that one of the strains in there uh, has actually been shown to help people who are dairy intolerant uh, mm -hmm. to become able to digest dairy. And particularly, Dairy has become such, such a bad name because uh, it's pasteurized. Now, certainly, if you're going to mass produce dairy in an, unclean, in an unclean world, which is the way dairy farms used to be, bacteria gets in there and raw milk is not good for you. But we've taken it all the way to the extreme. Instead of solving the problem by making sure the dairy farms are clean of bacteria, which you can do, <laughs> we've just said, let's kill all the bacteria. So now you just killed all the probiotics, which are naturally in milk. <laughs> And, 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 and you, you denatured it is what it's called, is that you've actually made the protein so that they're harder to digest. And also when it comes to milk, uh, it's cow milk, it's not mother's milk. So it's not fully suitable for humans. It does have what humans need in it, but it's the wrong balance. So when it's the wrong balance, that also affects the benefits of it. So if you look at, if you analyze cow milk, first of all, Milk, we have a resistance to milk because it's pasteurized, so it's very hard to digest at that point. Now, the second part of this is if you make yogurt from pasteurized milk, it's completely safe. You even boil it when you make it to make sure there's absolutely no bacteria. So you killed all the bacteria in it, so nothing bad's in it. Then you add the bacteria back in the safety of your own home and you make yogurt. And it's fantastic benefit from that. But having, having said that, Dairy in itself, if the bacteria have not eaten it and produced something else for you, which is the yogurt, what you have is cow milk is often undigestible to humans. Even if it's raw, it's hard to digest. We can, if you have healthy digestion, most people don't today, because if you're experiencing anxiety or stress, anger, any negative emotions, for example, loneliness, sadness, fear, any of those emotions inhibit your ability to digest anything particularly things that are hard to digest. And casein, which is, is a, one of the proteins in milk, is, is a little harder to digest than whey protein. So those are your two proteins that are in milk. Cows produce 90% casein uh, and 10% whey. Mother's milk is about equal amounts. If she's nursing a boy, she'll produce a little bit more casein and a little bit less whey protein. And if she's milking a girl <laughs> or she's nursing a girl, she'll actually make more whey protein and less casein. It's the massive intelligence of the body is actually providing just what this child needs and to develop the brain and to develop the immune system. So this is mom. She's providing the bacteria through breastfeeding for the gut. Now, if you've taken probiotic, if you've taken antibiotics, you've lost a lot of that. That's the problem with antibiotics. Sometimes they save lives, but now you missed out on what mom gave you. Children who weren't breastfed often miss out, missed out on what mom gave you. So they'll have digestive problems quite a bit. If mom is, if we're drinking chlorinated water, which most of us are raised on chlorinated water, and there's nothing, chlorinated water saves us from bad bacteria in the pipes and so forth but are in the, in the well, but then chlorine goes into your body and kills good bacteria. That's why you put chlorine in waters. It kills bacteria. So all the bacteria is gone if you use chlorine. So you can get this water, which is chlorinated. So you know it's safe. And then you take the chlorine out. So everybody should know you got to take the chlorine out of the water. And now you've got pure water again, but you don't have all the minerals that were in the water. Uh, so you want to add some minerals to it. So, you know, <laughs> we have to adapt if we're going to live in these 
cities where we're not in the mountains and, and by the stream and we don't have little villages where it's natural to go and get the water, you know. Uh, I remember being a child, you know, where you milk the cows and then you go put them in a metal container that's sterilized and you put the, the, the metal container in the cold river and that's how you keep it refrigerated so it wouldn't go bad. I mean, there, there's amazing things that we, we can learn. Chlorine in itself, besides killing the good bacteria in your gut, it also causes arterial sclerosis. You know, that's, you know, 800 million people this year will die from heart disease and many of them will, will be from arterial sclerosis. That means too much plaque on the veins. Well, it turns out that one doctor in the 60s, he said, oh, everybody is doing these cholesterol blockers, which are, cholesterol is really important for the brain function. And, <laughs> and now they're blocking cholesterol function. So we have a warning on anti-cholesterol drugs like Lipitor, which says you can lose your memory. Basically, you can lose your mind. Uh, now, having said that, I told my older brother and he said, well, my doctor says better to lose your mind than your life. <laughs> but actually, arterial sclerosis is plaque. Plaque is calcium. So we're not saying don't eat calcium. It's plaque and cholesterol, which the body produces together, kind of like a Band-Aid because the chlorine irritates the blood vessels. It irritates the blood mm -hmm. vessels, and so the body puts little Band-Aids on it. But if you don't have chlorine, then your body doesn't need to build all that plaque on your veins and you don't get arterial sclerosis, which is the narrowing of your veins, which increases your blood pressure. And we know now with COVID that it's the people who have high blood pressure on blood pressure medicines are the most at risk of actually having a, a challenging symptoms of COVID. Uh, meaning if they die, for example, we look at the extreme, they all have some kind of heart condition, uh, they have the flu, or they have COPD. Uh, those are the things, you know, what people don't realize is, you know, we see so many people dying from COVID, just to make a simple message here, 150,000 people every year die from COPD, which is all the symptoms of COVID. And 150,000 people die every year from what the CDC calls flu, which has all the symptoms of COVID. Uh, so basically, if you go to a hospital and you have the flu and COVID, they'll say you died from COVID. But, and if you have COPD, they'll say you died from COVID. And if you have a heart attack, they'll say you died from COVID. If you have COVID, that's called comorbidity. And uh, they don't just simply say you died. When we see these huge numbers, like at this point, it'll be 300,000 by the end of the year for sure, because already 300,000 people will die anyway, according to average statistics from COPD, which is congestive heart pro uh, uh, lung problems. And so if you have that COPD and you get the, the, the COVID, which is like a flu, uh, you're going to go to the hospital. And even if you don't have a flu, you'll catch it once you're there. So you'll die of COVID and, and the flu. So what we have to recognize is numbers are not always what you think they are. And the worst thing we can do is to be afraid. Uh, and, and, you know, I also know I'm very healthy. I could never die from COVID. But if I start to get a sore throat or wherever, I go, oh, oh, you know, even me, I know, just because the propaganda is this is this horrible, terrible thing. But it's not any more than what goes on all the time in this world, which is a flu epidemic. And we get a flu. And uh, every year, average, it's in some years, way more than that. Uh, 300,000 people will die from these two forms of viral infection and also lung challenges, which make you susceptible to uh, dying. And also ventilators, you know, no people have never heard about ventilators, but actually anybody who's dying of COVID goes on ventilators. I'm sorry, anybody who dies of COPD goes on ventilators. <laughs> so, so, but you never heard about it. You didn't have the press like 150,000 people today are, are have built up in America getting uh, ventilator treatment or dying from COVID. So this is like some bizarre phenomena which is going on today. And yes, we want to be careful, but we want to be careful to be healthy. Uh, just like with all these things, with heart disease, 800,000 people will die this year from heart disease to 150,000 from COPD. Those, the flu and COPD have the same symptoms as COVID and the other ones is people who have heart disease, some will get COVID when they go to the hospital, they'll die of a heart attack and they'll say it was a COVID death. So just people should know, you don't always get the correct statistics. 
Uh, it's overblown for sure, without a question. And some people say it doesn't even exist. Other people say it does exist, but it's really overblown. And other, other people say this is the worst thing that's ever happened. But we have to recognize we're, we're overreacting, which is what all disease is. Even when they talk about when COVID kills people, it's not the COVID that kills them. They say this very clearly. It's the body's overreaction to COVID. Now, let's just imagine that it's not those other conditions and it's just this COVID virus and your body's overreacting to it, which in most cases there's comorbidity, so there's something else. But let's just say somebody's just got it. The problem for this, and everybody should know this, is the first thing they'll do when you start having these flu symptoms, you think you have COVID, you'll go to the hospital or you get a test and they say, oh, you've got it, now you've got the symptoms. You'll go to a hospital to your doctor, you talk to your doctor. The first thing they'll do is they'll measure your temperature. And when they measure your temperature, they say, oh, you need to take Tylenol. Now you're going to die. Just if you have other weaknesses, you're not going to, basically, if you have a viral infection, that's all this is, is another viral infection, and you run a fever, the worst thing you can do is suppress that fever. Mm -hmm. If you suppress the fever, fever is your body's protective mechanism to kill viruses. To kill any virus, you just have to raise your temperature. And if you go up to 105, it's still safe. That's what people have to understand. If 103 doesn't kill the virus, which normally it would, then it will be 104 and 105. That will kill any viral infection in your body. If you want to do another technique, if you, you know what I did, because I, again, I was like, oh my gosh, did I get the, I had some uh, cold-like flu symptoms. What I did, and this is another technique, this comes from the Muslim religion, uh, and, and I'm not Muslim, but I study all the different ancient traditions and whatever, but this is uh, one of the things they do, is they fast. And if you have a viral infection, you fast without water for 24 hours. Mm. Now see, what will happen is about eight hours into that. Now first, it's good to fast with water for a couple of days, so you get acclimated to it. So a couple of days with water, lemon and water, something like that. Then what you do is you go 24 hours with absolutely no water. Within six hours, you will now begin to generate a fever. Your liver will generate chemicals that will kill and wipe out any virus in your body. But the opposite of that, and, and, and I did it the other day, and it was, uh, I fasted for six days, then I did the one day. So it was very easy to do because I'm already in the mode. See, fasting is easy after the couple of days because if you don't put carbohydrates in your body, your body has to start burning fat for fuel takes an adjustment. You get headaches, you might feel low energy, you get sluggish, toxins are coming out of your body. Because what happens now is your body begins to, has to turn to another fuel source. And the fuel source is the fat on your body. So that's called keto, keto, keto diet is to help people get in touch with burning fat. This isn't for everybody, but I'm just giving you a knowledge that most people don't know. So once you're in the fat burning mode, it becomes very easy to fast as long as you're not watching too much TV, passive Passive watching TV causes uh, high stress in the body, which makes you want to eat carbohydrates because it will, it will burn down your blood sugar and you'll crave sugar. So you, you just don't see food and stay busy, stay busy or sleep, one or the other. But the best thing is to stay busy. And I could talk more about that. But the, the bottom line here is when you go without water, then what happens is your body goes into a fever to kill the virus. Now, some people can't go into fever easily, so they should do that to generate a fever. If they can't do that, I mean, if they can generate a fever, you go, great, I'm running a fever. Don't do anything to suppress the fever. It's proven, proven that fevers kill viruses. <laughs> now, when they say people die from COVID, they don't never die from COVID, they die from the body's overreaction to COVID. Now, why would the body overreact to COVID? because the body is trying to survive, do whatever it can to survive. But if we don't help it, it tends to be out of balance. A fever is your body's normal reaction to, to survive. It will generate something called heat shock proteins. These heat shock proteins will heal the body. The fever will kill the virus, and then the heat shock proteins, and you can research this, there's, there's 10 of them, basic H, H, HSPs they're called. 
And some of those heat shock proteins actually cause weight loss, they cause brain function improvement, they cause brain balance. Always there's improvement in children who get a fever, who don't suppress the fever. Their social behavior changes, their intelligence improves, their health improves. I felt like a million bucks when I woke up the next morning having gone for 24 hours without water. Now, I'm not saying do that all the time. I'm just saying that if you think you have a viral infection, that's one of the things you can do. Another thing you can do if you start having cold symptoms or whatever right now is quickly nip it in the bud with acylococcinum. Acylococcinum is in every health food store. It's a homeopathic remedy. It tastes good, it's sugar, homeopathic sugar, and you just take three vials during the day and, uh, and drink lots of water, and that will be really good for you. So these are things we can do to strengthen our immune system. But having said all that, you know, we were talking about Bravo yogurt, everything about the immune system is healthy gut function. So, you know, when they say people have fevers over 105, for example, if you don't suppress it, it keeps going higher and higher. If you don't have the bacteria to help your body produce um, the, the immune re healthy immune reaction, then your fever would go too high. So above 105 is not safe. And generally, if that happens, it's because you don't have healthy gut function. And even if you don't generate a fever, a lot of people don't generate fevers or high fevers, it's because they don't have healthy gut function. The fever is your body's protection against viral infections. So please, please don't take Tylenol. And any person who goes to the hospital today, the first thing they do is they give you Tylenol. I believe that's why so many people are dying. That's to know, that's my belief. Is this, Tylenol is the second biggest selling drug in the world. Uh, they're, everything they do now, they try to stick Tylenol in it. It's so profitable. The other one is Lipitor. Uh, Lipitor is the inhibiting cholesterol levels. Uh, that's the biggest selling drug. I know the man who invented it. He said it was never meant for heart disease. It was meant for a particular disease where children only live to eight years old if even with Lipitor. But what happens is they have like 500 as opposed to 150, 200. Mm -hmm. It's so high that their body's way out of balance and it was to suppress symptoms. But still, they don't live a long life. So if you're over eight years old, you never need Lipitor and you shouldn't be controlling cholesterol levels. That's never the problem. The problem is unhealthy gut function, basically, and too much chlorinated water, antibiotics, all these things that we're doing, but how do we correct it all? The body has this natural corrective mechanism. And the first one is something called glutathione. So what generates glutathione? Glutathione is your body's super antioxidant. When you don't have antioxidants, when you have a viral infection, there's, there's a free radical damage. And if you don't have enough glutathione, then your body starts producing cytokines. That's what's killing people is this overreaction of the immune system. So that's what they're saying. What they're giving people is when they do try to treat it, they're giving them uh, some treatments that stop the inflammation, the overreaction of inflammation. But the only reason we ever overreact with inflammation is our, the first thing is our body's not making enough glutathione. If we don't make enough glutathione, then we go into a fever. If the fever doesn't exist to protect us, then the body goes a little haywire and produces too many of these cytokines. And that's the overreaction. So it's, it's like we're doing all the wrong things and we're also scaring people. Just the fear will inhibit glutathione production that helps your body neutralize the effects, the negative effects, the escalating effects of a viral infection. So back to cow milk. <laughs> so back to cow milk. Cow milk is 90% casein, hard to digest. So at my store, marsvenus.com, I'm the only product in the world, although anybody could duplicate, but nobody seems to do it which has a human balance of casein and whey protein by just simply taking cow milk, unpasteurized, which is called undenatured. And you take that cow milk and you, you do flash pasteurization with these just for short, short bursts to make sure there's no tuberculosis in it. But it doesn't kill all the other bacteria. Most pasteurized milk, they leave in there for a long time at super high temperatures and just kill the milk. So there's nothing there. So basically flash, it's an undenatured whey protein and undenatured casein and a human balance. And when you take those two things together, then you add enzymes to it that's already in the mix. Have you tried the, the superfood shake yet? I haven't, but I spotted it 
today. Okay, let, me, let me tell you what the, uh, the scientist who invented Bravo says. He says, if you take that shake, it's already made this way, it has these enzymes in it. And the, the instructions I give to people is you, you basically, uh, you put water in it, two scoops, don't add anything to it and let it sit for 30 to 45 minutes. This is what I do. Yeah, so you let it sit, it digests itself. Now during that time, if you put in your scoop of Bravo yogurt mm -hmm. and let it sit, shake it up, sit together, it magnifies, yes. according to Marco Ruggiero, dramatically mm -hmm. magnifies the benefits of Bravo yogurt. Yes. So that's it, it, taking these two things together can uh, really help a lot. And also it's got some other ingredients in it as well. They create the building blocks for, for glutathione, the three building blocks for glutathione. I, I, I'm going to try yours. I was using another product that was recommended by um, Marco and also... Um, uh, Peter Greenlaw, who's going to be on the show later on. Um, I'm Great. going to try yours because well, it, it'll that, be fun. The other product is also a good product without yeah. a doubt. Just yeah. make sure you let it sit with the water. And exactly. Really and a hundred percent and a hundred degrees, everybody not higher, no ice, let it sit for 40 minutes, re-blend it and then drink it. They say you can put ice and stuff in it. Just drink it the way it is. It's actually better tasting yeah. than without it. And the other's fine too but it gives it a really creamy, delicious flavor. I love it. And so I and do this once a day and then I do the shake also, but I also, is it okay? I also do the, the two ounces down the hatch separately. Yeah, I, 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 I want to try to get it all in at different angles. And yeah, so you can, there's, there's not too much you can take of it. It's just, you know, it's yeah. how, how much are you willing to do? But when you take the yogurt straight, it's very important. If you want the maximum benefit, to keep it in your mouth for 30 to 40, even if you're drinking the shake as well. Mm -hmm. The shake's more powerful, so you wouldn't have to do it as long, but keep it in your mouth for, for 30 seconds, mm -hmm. swishing it around, because a lot of it gets absorbed through the mucosa in the mouth, and that's really helpful as well. Wonderful. Uh, there's, the, there's the people that don't wanna make the yogurt, there's also the yogurt which has been dehydrated into a capsule. So you get a whole serving size of yogurt in one little capsule, uh, which, they, which they've created, it's still better to make the yogurt fresh, okay? I mean, it's still great to do the capsules. That's secondary. That's what I do now. But when I first started, I, I did the three-month protocol, which is what's recommended to restore gut function. And then I take the capsules as a regular thing to keep replenishing my gut. Because, you know, every time you eat food which is, uh, has pesticides in it, it kills bacteria in your gut. So you have to keep replenishing good bacteria. It's just that something we have to adapt to. And another thing is, even if you're eating organic food, there's no such thing as real organic food anymore because what's, what's, if you measure the soil, what you see is when airplanes are flying over, there's jet fuel all over the ground. There's all kinds of things that comes out of airplanes. You know, whether you believe in chemtrails or contrails, whatever it is, we know that something's coming down. And when you see those long clouds behind plane, it's not just uh, ice crystals. If it's ice crystals, it's gone in 20 minutes. So if it's not gone in 20 minutes, something's coming down into the soil. Our soil is no longer as pure as it used to be, even if you're doing organic gardening. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, there's I, you know, I was just having tomatoes yesterday and from my garden, I grow everything. And, you know, there's a knowledge that you shouldn't actually wash your food if it's right out of the garden. But I do, I wash it just briefly because I, I know stuff's coming down from the sky now, unfortunately. So you got to wash it. You see, if you don't wash your food, you get something called MSM. You get sulfur. There's a, a sulfur that, that, that's formed that lasts a few hours after you pick. And that's very important for rebuilding the body, having beautiful skin, having connective tissue, taking away pain in your body. So that's another supplement that I'm very fond of, which is uh, hot water and MSM. MSM, it's a bitter drink. It's kind of like a, if you like coffee, black coffee, then you love it. But some people don't want bitter. But if you don't want bitter, that's a problem. We, if we like sweet, you got to balance it with bitter. And I like sweet, so I have to keep balancing with my, uh, so this is a hot water, like a tea with a teaspoon of MSM in it, which oh, makes nice. it bitter. And once you, your body loves bitter after a while. It's just, we're so soft as a culture, you know, such immediate gratification. <laughs> you know, we all want to be happy. We don't, <laughs> it, 
too much of that's not a good thing. You got to tough it up a little bit. Yeah. So I, I highly recommend hot water with MSM. I have a question. Yes. Um, a lot of times, or or some people take uh, hot lemon water uh, or um, apple cider vinegar. What's the uh, what's the extra benefit that this would produce over that? Just so people know, because they do it for their health, for the pH and that kind of stuff. So the MSM. Um, what okay. would that do? It's for rebuilding the body, a really wonderful thing. Now, if you were to take one supplement and that was it, it'd be apple cider vinegar. Okay. Uh, it's such a simple one. You take, and you have to do it the right way. Uh, and there'd be many people say that's the right way. I'll tell you what I think is the right way. Mm -hmm. And it's very uh, scientific. It's, you, what happens is digestion is everything. Everything comes down to digestion. And, and the gut is, that's why Bravo is so important because a lot of what, what we get into our brain and our body for healing is digested through the gut. And you need these different probiotics to digest. But you also need the right balance just to break down proteins in the stomach to get your fuel for your brain is you've got to break down the protein into amino acids and then amino acids then are rebuilt into proteins in the body. So your body does its own thing with them. You have to break them down and in order to break them down, if you're under stress, then your, your stomach acids will be too much, okay? So when your stomach acids, let, let me back up a second. When you're under stress, you, the first thing that happens is your body stops making hydrochloric acid. Now, HCL is what's necessary to break down proteins in your stomach. So if you're stressed, which that's our big problem today is we're stressed, right? anxiety, not sleeping well, irritation, annoyance, and, and worries and all that. that, that inhibits the production of HCL in your body, it produces stress hormones, cortisol and adrenaline inhibit HCL production. So HCL breaks down our proteins. It's like an enzyme, but it's an, it's an acid. So a little different from your enzymes, which also are important. So when, it, when HCL goes into your stomach, it doesn't digest your proteins. So they sit in your stomach and they putrefy and they turn to acid. So then you start getting acid stomach. Now, some people have too much acid in their stomach. That's why I said stress increases acid, but not by making your own acid, your food just starts to acidify. It putrefies there and it goes into your system as, as not the way it's supposed to be. It's not fully digested in the stage of the stomach. What apple cider vinegar do, a long story to explain what apple cider vinegar does, is you take a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar and about an ounce to two ounces of water. And that's all. That produces a mildly acidic formula. And that mild acidic liquid goes into your stomach. And if your stomach's over acidic due to putrefaction, then you put in that mild, it changes the pH of the stomach back to where your body can produce, your body will say, oh, the acid level went down. We need to make more hydrochloric acid. If it goes too far down, the body can't make enough hydrochloric acid. If it doesn't go down and there's all this acid in the stomach, your body says, I can't put more acid in there because it will burn. So you need to have low stress in order to produce hydrochloric acid. But if you're stressed, you end up not digesting your meats or your proteins and you end up with too much acid in your stomach. So your body stops making hydrochloric acid. If you're not making hydrochloric acid, then you can't digest proteins. This acid is putrefied. It doesn't break it down. So I hope that wasn't too much information. But it, That was it, fabulous, especially for me, because i am become a researcher of how to heal my body. And so yeah, yeah. I, really, I really love that. I also love how in, in your work, it talks about that everything stems from the gut you know, all illnesses. And so really to, to keep that gut nice and healthy and all these uh, ways in which you've shared is really important. It will reduce illness, everyone. It absolutely will stop it if you're very healthy. Um, it's really beautiful what you've shared and I'm so grateful. I want everybody to know that on, um, that on Thursdays at 10 a.m. Uh, to 12 p.m. Is that Pacific Standard Time, John? Oh, my Facebook Live? Yeah. yeah right. I do 10 to 12 on Thursdays. Okay. Right, now, the, right now, the theme is uh, uh, for women only. It's how to bring out the best in men. 
Sweet. But, uh, Sweet. Prior to that, I did one on meditation. I did one on healing the heart, one on better communication, Excellent. one on making your dreams come true, one on romance, sex, and Lovely. dating. You know, so that's all. It's all at Facebook. If you go to Facebook, John Gray, Mars, Venus, Facebook, uh, then you see up at the top, it says videos. You click on that, the whole world opens up to you and it's all free. That's fabulous. Everyone, let's do that because I'm going to be posting this regularly on my Facebook Live for at least till the end of the year. I want people in my community to know about this and to come to this. And also remember about the book, uh, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. It's absolutely fabulous. I'll also be sending you all out in your daily email with John, his free course that he's gifting you all um, for this video. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us, John? Oh, well. Lots, lots. <laughs> I want everybody, uh, I, I want people to know, you know, you did Bravo yogurt. It's one of the things that has helped you. Uh, what I would say is for everybody today, when we're coming with health concerns, one of the universal things is digestion. And we talked about that with letting the shakes, for example, digest themselves first. And if you add, if you, if with, particularly if you have cancer or, uh, you know, diabetes, either of those two things. You really don't want to add sugar, but you want something that gives you what you need. And the, the shakes that I produce, for example, have a teaspoon, two teaspoons of sugar in it. But if you add, which is not a lot for a lot of people, but if you have cancer, you want to be very careful with refined sugar. So what you do, if you add the yogurt, uh, homemade yogurt, and Bravo would be the best, to the shake, uh, the, you know, an ounce or two, you put that into the shake and shake it up a little bit and let it sit for 45 minutes. The yogurt will actually digest and uh, eliminate the sugar. Wow. Okay. Okay. So the, 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 just a tiny, tiny bit. You always need a tiny, tiny bit of some glucose in your body. My shakes have glucose, not sugar, but you need some glucose in order to deliver the minerals into the cells. The body has to have a little surge, uh, but the yogurt itself, which was really nice because you know, my shake is made for everybody, but at the same time, uh, that little te two teaspoons of sugar is nothing. You know, it's like an ounce of orange juice, you know? So right, <laughs> people, right. people say, oh, I can't eat sugar. And I say, do you drink orange juice? Have you ever eaten an apple? <laughs> Any of those things. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and this is, this is uh, for most people, but if you have big blood sugar issues, then I want to rec recommend, and it's be one of those extra things with any condition when it comes to blood sugar, and that is berberin. Right. Uh, berberin is one of my favorite supplements. The other one is for stress is lithium orotate. Now, uh, it's so, so key is to take, uh, you know, you could do, it, it depending, if you're feeling stressed, anxious, you should be taking three little capsules of lithium orotate, or even better, something I formulated with lithium orotate along with cofactors. Because hmm. everything has cofactors, and uh, it would, you know, there's vitamin D there, but not enough. We need sunshine; it's very important. But you need some vitamin D for the for the minerals to work, along with magnesium, potassium, zinc. These are all alkalizing minerals. Mm -hmm. So I put a little capsule together of all the alkalizing minerals in a form that gets into your that brain. Works. And there's immediate stress reduction when people use Mars Venus Super Minerals. And there's one for women, one for men, because. Women need less calcium and more magnesium. Uh, magnesium is calming. Magnesium is stimulating. So you need to have, particularly women tend to run out of magnesium more than men. Men tend to run low in calcium because calcium stimulates dopamine and men tend to run low in dopamine and get addicted to dopamine stimulators. So they get the, the, the two balance of magnesium and calcium. You get the, the zinc, which uh, particularly men need more of and you know the men listening i just want you to know if you're concerned about wellness and healing and whatever every time you release your semen you run out of zinc mm. so you really need to replenish yourself with zinc supplements even better you need to make sure that if you release your semen it's in, well you're, you're feeling other hormones to counteract the high dopamine that gets produced when you release mm -hmm. otherwise it's like taking cocaine but mm -hmm. if you're making love to someone when you release and you're touching and it's human contact, then the body has the right blend of cofactors so it doesn't cause you to become addicted to porn, which mm -hmm. is a big problem for men, uh, addicted to releasing, but it should be through partnership or it should be transmuted.
There's no need for men to release unless they're making love. If you're doing it alone, I just teach men that you get addicted to it. And every time, and you do it, you know, basically more than a, if you're not getting zinc supplement already, your testosterone levels are going to dramatically drop. And this is proven. Okay. So this is for men. Testosterone is so important not to take it, but to make it mm -hmm. for women, their whole well being and healing and their immune function is particularly about keeping their stress levels low, that adrenaline response, that worrying, that concern, that feeling of overwhelm, that feeling of helplessness, any of those kind of feelings is a stress response. Now, what you want to do, these super minerals will dramatically drop that stress response. They're, they're amazing. But you also, for all of the supplements that I recommend, they only work when they're stimulated. It's like literally, it's to build my house, you need all these raw materials but it's the quality of our relationships that builds the house. Mm -hmm. You could have quality relationships, but you have no materials, so the body gets sick. But you can have, uh, so relationships alone is not enough. You have to have the, the, the actual ingredients, the calcium, the magnesium, the minerals, the, the enzymes, you know, all the probiotics, this is all to build the body. But if you don't have the right relationship skills or right relationship environment, you can't build a house. So you need both together. And we see that when you take my supplements that I recommend, they work most best. If you're also in a woman, you're realizing one of your big challenges when it comes to health is to make sure that you feel that you're aware of the reality that I need help and you're able to get it. And that's really, really key is for women is to feel I can get help. Because whenever you feel dependent on someone or something, meaning I'm getting help, that will produce estrogen and estrogen lowers women's stress levels. For men, uh, it's the testosterone, which means I can help myself. Mm -hmm. So, and it doesn't mean you can't ask for help. It means that after you've tried everything on your own, you realize you can't do it yourself, then you need others. That's good. That's testosterone producing because you're solving the problem. But testosterone is about solving the problem and estrogen is about getting help to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. And, and so you're getting help, you're doing all this research, you're learning all these things to help yourself. That in itself is, is reassuring, which means your estrogen levels go higher, that keeps your stress levels low. A lot of ways to increase estrogen is do things that you, uh, and also progesterone, do things that you enjoy doing that you don't have to do mm -hmm. is progesterone stimulating, which women need progesterone, and to do things where you feel safe that you can ask for and get help and you can depend on others for certain things is an estrogen producer. So basically um, singing, dancing, going to classes, learning from people, researching, studying, all these things where you're depending on something outside yourself to give you what you need can be tremendously healing. Uh, if you're trying to do it all on your own, it doesn't have that relationship aspect to it and that's very important for women because women can get caught up into feeling i have to do everything myself mm -hmm. that pressure can inhibit the digestion process yes. so those are those are some extra things i wanted to thank share you. You know, thank that, you uh, i wanted to share something really quick that you spurred on me and then we will wrap this up and i'm so grateful for your time you talked about berberin and I'm very careful in cancer, we have to starve the cancer in order for us to remove it. And so um, I will be taking that simply because my oncologist, uh, my uh, oncologist naturopath said that I need personally. So everybody be aware of what you need. I've been testing my blood as a diet. I'm not a diabetic, but I test my blood every day. And so berberine is fabulous if it's over what it should be to help reduce it when you eat your meals, you take a berberine. So be aware of what you're doing. And that's a little tip on my part to ride along with John's fabulous message. Well, along with berberine, if you did a search at my website, it would come up just berberine. But the actual product that I recommend a berberine, because certain products is one that combines berberine with banaba. Banaba is the Ayurvedic equivalent of berberine. Berberine actually was very popular with American Indians. And then you have banaba, which is very, very talked about in Ayurveda for the same reason. So they yeah. combine it together in a product called Glyco X. And that's at my website as well. So that's what I do is I just try to find, you know, the, the, the things that I have seen to be very effective to help people. But more importantly, it's the videos to help explain why these things are helpful. Uh, sleep is also very helpful, very, very important for people. Uh, 
and um, regularity when it comes to sleep. What's interesting with the COVID thing, staying home, not traveling. I'm used to traveling all the time in time zones. I, you can look at my videos. I look so much better now uh, than I've ever looked in my life. Uh, I have more energy now. I'm happier now. All these things, primarily, I would attribute it to regular sleep. Because now I have no jet lag ever. I'm always going to bed at the same time. I'm an 11 to 7 person. Okay, so I go, I go to bed at 11 and I wake up at 7. And occasionally I will wake up in the middle of the night and I go, great, I'll just meditate for a little while. Yeah. Just sit up without back support. And then my back gets a little tired and I lay down and I'm gone again. So I never panic if I have to wake up in the night. Uh, but sometimes that will happen if I don't eat the right things the day before. So check your sleep compared to what you ate and make adjustments in what you eat. And you know, diet, there's no one diet that fits everybody. But for me, the diet that works for me, because I'm such a fan of fasting is, I just stay busy during the day. I try to exercise somewhat during the day. And uh, if you stay busy and you're not passively sitting, uh, you don't necessarily have to feel your hunger. It mm -hmm. actually goes away. If you have stable blood sugar, then you don't feel hunger and you can do what's called intermittent fasting. Yes, I do uh, that. You do that, that's very, very good. Yeah. So you're eating within an eight hour period of yeah. time or exactly. just eating dinner. For me, it's just eating dinner. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'll have an apple in the afternoon or something like that, uh, apple and almond butter. And for those of you that like your snacks and your sweets, cut up apple, almond butter. It's a wonderful ketogenic type uh, snack. You know, because I look at, you know, people buy all these candy bars, basically they, they're just nuts and some kind of sweetness. In right. it. You know, apples or a piece of fruit and some yeah. almond butter is a really good, a good little snack for people. That's wonderful. Yeah, we all need, we all need those tips because we get hungry in between. Yeah, we do get hungry in between until you don't. You see, when you have stable blood sugar, you don't get hungry in between. Mm -hmm. And another mm -hmm. thing for blood pressure, I just want people to know this is a simple fix for blood pressure besides learning to meditate doing some aerobic exercise, which just means get your heartbeat up there for a little while. Don't have to push it too hard. But another one is every day, if you do have this condition, I don't do it every day because I don't have that condition, but I test my blood pressure all the time. And you have to know that as you get older, the certain medical societies in America, I forget their names, basically say anybody over 60, the safe zone is at under 150. Safe zone is under 150. What the other medical community that sells drugs says is that everybody should be at 120 and under. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, at 130, it's hypertension. And they say that's complete nonsense. Uh, this has all just been made up to sell uh, heart blood pressure medicines. So go look at, at blood pressure myths, and you'll see that there's large health organizations that are standard you know, for people. And it's, I forget their name, but they, when it, it used to be 140 and went down to 130 and now at 120. And so what they did is raised it to 150. <laughs> so, wow. You know, even with cholesterol, nobody, nobody in Europe is alive over 70 unless they have what we would call in America, high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. These things naturally happen as your body changes. You see, we are, it's not like we're necessarily more sick. It's that our body changes. It's natural for women to have less estrogen and more testosterone as they age. It's natural for men to have more estrogen than they had when they were young as they age. That gives men more wisdom and gives women more confidence, that hormonal balance. The right. problem is women's testosterone goes too high. And the problem is men's estrogen levels go too high. And high estrogen in men is the only cause of heart disease, not mm -hmm. cholesterol. Interesting. No, man, no man has a heart attack unless he has high estrogen and low testosterone. Now you don't hear that so much because giving men testosterone and estrogen blockers doesn't do anything. It's you have to, as a man, you have to be making testosterone in order to stay healthy, which means you have to have a job. You have to be doing work and women who work too much, they're going to have low estrogen. So they need to be happier, do more what they enjoy doing, what they like to do and depending on others for help when they need it. So there you get the whole hormonal balance, which I think is so key, so key for both men and women, the foundation, and it's through our relationships, our behaviors, what we choose to do with our time that stimulates these hormones. But when it comes to blood pressure, here's another little tip. I just love it. 
because I was testing and I was getting, I was just getting up to, you know, 130 for me. And I thought, oh, okay, let's see, I get it down. And it's where you, the Muslims do this, where they, uh, uh, and there's studies showing this works to lower blood, normalize blood pressure five times a day. I think in the study, they just did it three times a day, but the Muslims will do it five times a day is you take cold water from your elbow to your hand and three times wash it. And then on the other arm, three times wash it. And from the knee down to your ankles, three times wash it on one leg, on the other leg, and your face on top of your head. But what that does is it creates a temperature differential in your body. And because you see, I'm not washing the top part of my arm, just right. the lower part. Right. So now it's cold here and warmer here. That increases blood flow. Mm. So it improves circulation. It stimulates natural improved circulation. You know, a lot of health farms. Fabulous. I'm going to do that. But it's really, and even before I take my shower in the morning, because at my house it's rather cold, takes a while for it to heat up, I go, great. I put my left arm in the cold water, I put my right arm in the cold water, left leg in the cold water, right leg, then put on my face, my head. And by that time, it's warmed up, you know, yeah. so, you know a warm shower. So it's, uh, it, that's very, very interesting. Just that simple thing of creating circulation. The body needs to have that easy circulation rather than getting us uh, too stuck. Yeah, that's fabulous. So normalize your blood pressure, everybody, and healthy blood pressure, healthy gut function, healthy blood sugar, nothing's going to kill you. That's They're gonna right. Healthy, ha healthy, happy people. So healthy, healthy, happy people. Sounds yeah. great. I love this interview with you, and thank you for sharing your amazing recovery as you conti continue. And part of why I started carrying Bravo yogurt at my website is I heard about these marvelous results from clinics in Switzerland where they were using this Bravo yogurt to help shrink tumors. But there are other things that you're doing, and I'm curious what other things there are, just so people get a sense, because Bravo yogurt alone doesn't do it. People need to know there's no right. one thing that does it. Right. Um, I, I'm going to go live also on this show and share, but I'm going to share here because I'm crazy about John. He's amazing, isn't he? Um, I started with um, the uh, Isogenic Shakes and yours. I also yeah, started made by the same company. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Okay. And then I also started with um, Poor Man's Chemo, which is, and if you guys are interested in this, you'll have to write me for the exact measurements. I'm just going to tell you what it is. I'll tell you John off here because I don't want people to be irresponsible with their treatment. Mm -hmm. So it's a maple syrup sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. And I cook it over the stove for five to six minutes. Now off air, I'll give you the exact measurements. This uh, you take twice a day for people who are just trying to rid their body of anything of cancer forming. For me, I began every um, six hours on taking it around the clock, and then I speeded it up in August every four hours, and the tumor just kept reducing, reducing. Mine were, uh, you could feel them on the, near the nipple, and my breast started to get deformed, and it's now gorgeous again. Mm -hmm. Nothing, you can't feel anything, you know, blows my doctor's mind, the oncologist and all. And so um, it's very, very powerful. But let me, let me mention to everybody maple syrup of bicarbonate. What that is, is bicarbonate is going to neutralize fungus and acids. It's going to kill them. And the maple syrup is there in order to deliver it. It's a Trojan horse, everyone. Trojan horse. If it's you keep your blood sugar really low, right, John? Yeah. Then the Trojan horse, it gobbles it up because it wants sugar. Cancer is a sneaky little, uh, I'll use nice language, is a sneaky little thing. And it changes its form in order to consume the host. So it's sort of like a, the way it eats. It's sort of like a parasite. So when we go at it with uh, limited sugar in our body or no sugar as I do, except for what I get in my shakes and stuff, and the Trojan horse comes, it just eats that thing up. And it also, I found that as we're healing from things, we get kind of exhausted. And a little bit of maple syrup will add just a little bit of poof. I don't need it now, you know, that energy surge because my yeah. body's healthier. But in the beginning, it seemed to help that as well, just a little bit. Well, it's mainly the delivery system as well. It, you need it, something it is. to get it over there. You know, there's another system of when people do chemo, there's something called low dose chemo, where mm -hmm. they take a little sugar and they do low dose. Mm -hmm. And then the, the sugar brings the chemo to the tumor. You don't have to do the whole body. If, right. if you do it by fasting a day and then adding sugar, and there's certain doctors that do those kind of treatments, mm -hmm. don't follow what I'm saying here, but just know that that's available out there. 
And the standard treatment people will say, oh, that's a bunch of baloney. But I know people, or I know a guy right now who's healed his prostate cancer doing the low dose cancer uh, chemo for him. Yeah. But what you're using is bar carbonate soda, which okay. kills viruses and fungus, uh, and uh, which is what cancer, some people believe, could call it that. And uh, it, the, the maple syrup delivers it there. But I'd never heard of cooking it together. That's really fantastic. I've tried it the other way after I had shrunk my tumors, and I it actually not made me well. They have some where you put a teaspoon of uh, baking soda in a pan and you cook it, and then you put in a little bit of maple syrup and you drink it. I prefer the other way. Yeah. Um, it just was easier to consume in yes, my yeah. body, and it yeah. worked very quickly. So That's brilliant. Yeah, That's really brilliant. and also LifeWave patches I wear. Oh, now LifeWave patches. This is a new technology people can know about, it's which amazing. is it does. Uh, I, I've heard it has great benefits. I also have them as well. It does. The glutathione, the stem cell. Yeah. Two months ago, everybody knew that I was, I mean, it looked like I was dying. And then instantly I've changed and everybody's like, wow, you look 20 years younger. And I'm like, well, it's just from taking care of myself, you know? So there is something that has to do with all of this together. It's, it's beautiful, everyone. And uh, so those are the main things that you're doing. Yes. Okay, yes. That's really good to hear. And supplements like uh, turkey tail mushroom, yep, yep. Um, th things like that. I'm taking a lot of supplements as well. And I'm going to be purchasing a lot of stuff off your site because like the Berberan, I can get somewhere else, but I'm going to get off of John's site because I think okay. that's cool. And then Thank some other so stuff much. too. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. They, okay. These are, we, we have to, you know, we're not giving, I just want to say this, you know, this is not the advice we're giving for people with cancer. We're just saying that alternative treatments mm -hmm. are there. You need a good holistic practitioner. And if they haven't mentioned any of these things, you can bring it up to them because that's how they learn as well. You know, we're, right. we don't have this freedom to talk so profusely about all of this. They don't do research on all these things because research is funded by drug companies. Right. And so they don't do a lot of research on the alternative natural treatments. They don't do the big studies, the big double blind studies. So that's unfortunate, but there are doctors who do work with this every day and know that there's benefits. And I'm glad that you found one. And Thank you. I'm glad that you're sharing this with people to open our eyes and awarenesses to the many, many possibilities that exist. And, and there's a book that I've also been studying like a Bible called How to Starve Cancer Without Starving Yourself. And that really has brought me forward into two months ago about realizing that I could, I could handle this because I wanted to be a warrior of my own physical case. So whatever you guys do, whether it's Western, whether it's a combination, whether it's uh, holistic, do it as a warrior for yourself to heal and love yourself. And thank you so much, John, for joining us. And everyone, we'll see you in another episode. I'm very honored that you're here, John. Thank you. Thank you.